93.7 in Accra. Yawa Hansen Crow is in the studio. Those of you who were with us in January, oh man, we had the privilege of spending a lot of time with Yawa here on radio and of course at Alisa Hotel. Now, Yawa is the founder of Leading Ladies Network. She's all over the place. I just saw a picture of you and uh, president of Liberia, former president yes. of Liberia and your daughter. What have you been up to since we met in January? It looks like your calendar has been like here to here and there. What's, what's been happening? Well, first of all, hi to your listeners. It's such a pleasure to to be here and to be back in touch with with you mm. it's always a joy to come into the studio oh, i mean <laughs> the presence here and the colors and the brightness it just always is uplifting mm. but since january um i mean i have you know my my top job is mother in chief ah. uh, mm. i'm a chief executive at home <laughs> uh, the kids keep me busy i am married to the great Oga mm. Charles Hansen Kwao mm. and you know it's been a season of lots of growth I have the great pleasure of leading a women's network I'm also doing different types of consulting work mm. and so I'm blending um, wife and motherhood with consulting and leading a women's organization mm. and mm. I think the topic of uh, today that we're going to discuss is so mm. critical because I think it doesn't matter who's running the women's program. Whenever women gather, you know somebody's going to raise their hand and ask the question. It's either asked this way, how do you find balance? Mm. Or it's asked this way, like, how do you do this and do this and do that and find and still, success? you know. <laughs> and so I'm glad you're making a topic of it. Mm. And I'm glad in the lead up to the couples retreat, we're tabling this because... You know, the Bible talks about in the last days, God pouring his spirit on all flesh and women will do things that they hadn't done before. Mm. And mm. it's part of the commission that really drives the work that I do with Leading Ladies Network. But it's also a conversation that hasn't quite seeped into the mainstream culture. So again, I applaud you for, for furthering the conversation today mm. because there are a lot of women who know that God has assigned them to do more than just be a wife and more than just be a mom. Mm. Um, but they're struggling with a cultural context that doesn't quite think that that's cool. Mm. <laughs> and so, you know, I think we're in the midst of this cultural revolution where, you know, the traditional mindsets about women are being challenged in a way that is bringing some backlash. And many times the recipients of that backlash are women who are doing multiple things outside of the home. Indeed. And so I'm so glad to be talking about this. And I'm talking about this not as someone who has cracked the code, mm. but someone who has some opinions to offer. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were cracking the code this evening. <laughs> well, I can offer, you know, I, I don't know that there's a code to be cracked, <sighs> that's the truth. Because Indeed. I think what it looks like for each woman will differ. Indeed. And, you know, the Bible gives us a few clues. Um, I believe, you know, as a Christian channel and as a Christian lifestyle station, um, the Bible really is the the the, the benchmark here Indeed. Yeah, that's you know, right. the, the grass withers the flower fades but the word of God remains eternal mm. and when I'm in doubt I always turn to the word that Lord what are you saying to me how is it you know and I think it's important to have this conversation because there are other voices um, you know be careful that we don't uh, subscribe to the doctrine of mm. demons <laughs> mm. uh, instead of elevating the word of God and sometimes we feel like the word of God is isn't contemporary and it's not cool and so a lot of women are struggling and so Beyonce is telling us how to live our marriage um, so when we have a quarrel we sing to the left to the left everything you own in a box to the left and then we move on and I don't think that that's God's best for us so I'm glad that the retreat that's coming up is also filled with teaching because some of it is the practical like what do you do when and if mm -hmm. um, and some of it is you will learn from 
from other people's experience but I think like if there were no sessions and no instructors like the Bible like sure word of prophecy mm. sure guide mm. um, the Bible talks about um, you know the spirit of God being poured out on all women but as a wife we're called to be helpers and I think part of the challenge with that and this is something that a, a sister friend of mine who runs um, Closer Walk Wise she was actually sharing um, this recently that the Holy Spirit is also called a helper mm. so we kind of have the same job description as the Holy Spirit that's right and <laughs> you know I hadn't thought about it that way before mm. I texted her and said wow this is really this, this is, is mind-boggling oh. to me um, but if we're called in a marriage and in the marriage our role is that of helper and supporter um, what does that mean because we're we're living in a cultural context where that doesn't sound like it's sexy enough you know I'm mm. a chief executive executive in my office and but when I come home <laughs> I'm the helper mm. and I think part of the challenge that a lot of women are having is reconciling those roles that in one context I am this and I'm the boss and I'm the shot caller and in this context in disagreement my husband's call is is what we go with mm. um, and mm. I struggled like many women do in trying to like I, I, I know that I'm capable and smart but God knew the manufacturer of us both uh, you know had a certain design and template in mind and if we believe that God wants our good, we will accept that God's way is the best. It, you know what, how, how, how do you do it personally as a person? Um, you do travel a lot. You do uh, work a lot. I'm sure you are a workaholic. I mean, <laughs> you know, love to work, do a lot of projects. And so when it comes to your husband, your children, I, I go. To, I went on your page today, and I you still find time to spend a lot of time with family. You know, times off. You were here. You were there. If there were, I mean, I, I know there are women listening to us this evening. There are a lot of, especially Christian marriages that are broken because mm -hmm. the wife is in a certain status, and for whatever reason, they are unable to continue. Time submission issues. You're called to serve. And so, how do you do it, Yella? So, Ajima, let me push back against what you've just said. I don't think the marriages are breaking because the women are out there. Mm. Men have been out there for centuries, and women have somehow dealt with it. I think when we have lack of understanding as a unit, that's when things fall apart. I think when there's no shared understanding of what this person is called to and what the other is called to, that's where there's a breakdown. Women have had this hassle forever mm. and didn't make a thing out of it, you know what I mean? But I think the challenge is that many people have had the expectation that the public facing person would be the man. And I think we're being challenged by this dichotomy of what we were used to and what currently exists. Mm. There are women who are called outside of the home and it's undeniable. Yeah. There are many women who are actually the financial backbone of their home. But you have men who feel challenged by that partly because they were raised in a different societal, cultural context. They are being teased by their peers like hey, you did there, your wife did yeah. come to, you know. And my husband hasn't been immune to that either. We live in a cultural context that doesn't think this is okay mm. so I don't I would hate for you to make the point that it's because the woman is mm. out there that mm. the family is mm. breaking mm. families break when there's no longer a shared understanding mm. so I like to rewind and think well how do we help prepare our daughters so that you know they can own their ambition but do so in a way that enables them to be better advocates for self so that when you're entering a marriage unit uh, your husband isn't surprised by 
you. Uh, he, he knows what he's getting when he mm. gets you. Mm. <laughs> and how do we have the confidence to talk about what our ambitions are at the point of agreement? Mm. How about you're in a marriage and then you self-actualize? You're beginning to unearth these gifts that God's placed in you and he's giving you the urging and the leading to, to do this and try that and to start this and to start that. I think it requires a certain wisdom. Mm. And you know, the Bible talks about the kind of wisdom that God can and does supply. I think I'm going far by the wisdom of God. Mm. The Holy Spirit, hmm, this is on my plate, this is on my plate. I feel like I should do this, I feel like I should do this. Number one, having the guts to have the conversation with the spouse and to say, hey, you know, I've been invited to do this and I'd like to go and this is why. What do you think? I don't go if my husband doesn't give me his blessing. Mm. My husband's opinion matters to me and I believe what the word says that he's my covering he's my boss and I believe that every time that I allow him to have the final say God can find ways to bless me outside of that I do not support rebellion in a marital unit between husband and spouse and wife. I do also, you know, the Bible talks about submission, and I know we all love to pull out the scripture, like, yeah. you know, submit. <laughs> um, and we're supposed to be submitted as the man is submitted to Christ. So there's an understanding and a conditionality there that if my husband submitted to Christ and I trust Christ, therefore I trust him. And therefore, in times of disagreement, I will let him have the final say. I remember when my husband and I married, we decided that we would wait a couple of years before having kids. Mm. We said we would wait five years. And then I think at somewhere at like point three or point four, year three or year four, you know, like, he, he asked to revisit the agreement. And I know the independent woman and yeah. the women independent, you know. You know. You know. Like in me, it's like, oh no, we had an agreement. Oh no, this is not done. You know, I just like, God, this is what, oh, you know. And I did what he said. I removed the contraceptive. Do you know I still didn't have kids until after the five years? Like, oh. God knows how to protect us. And God knows our hearts. And, you know, there's something about the word that when you walk in in obedience because that scripture that is such a torment to me and a challenge to me is like we rebuke disobedience when your obedience mm. is complete mm. like have I completely obeyed you Lord in this area that I'm having struggle have I completely submitted my will to you and this husband my husband and I went to school together and you know you could say my grades were better and I am this and you know I was student council president I mean like I was I was known I was seen you know and so the, the tension that any woman with ambition will have is pride mm. and it's not even just any woman with ambition any person with ambition will have pride to contend with but God says that I resist the proud but I give grace to the humble mm. and I found that when you humble yourself under the mighty arm of God and say Lord I don't quite agree with Oga on this one and that's why I call my husband Oga yeah. I don't want to forget who is the boss <laughs> in this relationship Interesting. and you know his name is Charles but anyone who knows us knows that I call him Oga because you know the Bible says that Abraham gave reverence to her husband and called him Lord there's just a wisdom in that for me it's a reminder that look as much as I may be out there and a lot of people know me more than they know my spouse mm. but he is my covering he is my head and this was not um, th 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 there's no negotiation this is what the the Bible says and I believe God with all my heart all my soul and all my mind and so I think the problem comes when we get a little selective and when we lace our Christianity with a little worldly wisdom and I think you know there's a lot to be said for allowing God to be God mm. that God you know you know the Bible says you know my uprising you know my down sitting you know when I'm upset and depressed and sad and you know when I'm getting a little too puffy you know when I need to be straightened out and sometimes you will use the voice of my husband to straighten me out let me not resent that let me give glory to him and glory to you through him because that's the template that you know will work because there's something about when your husband knows that you have his back and you have his respect 
there is a release that mm. you get mm. that I mm. think is better got through that than through I know my rights and do you know who I am? Do you know who were you before we met? And blah, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> and you know, I the do. Bible already said men's lives will become better when they find wives. Mm. So we are a plus factor, you know. And God has His way of dealing with them. Yeah, well, you know the, the people talking on Facebook. Imano also has said young ones out there really need these lectures. Imano, we haven't even gotten into the <laughs> lectures yet, and. You were getting into this question already. You were answering for me. Uh, one of the keys for our retreat is conflict resolution. Mm -hmm. And I believe it's a big part of making or breaking a marriage. Mm -hmm. Some, sometimes something so small in somebody's eyes, it becomes a full-blown, you know, how do you navigate through this? Resolving conflict. You, you were already getting mm -hmm. in that part already. So I, you know, strongly encourage that if there's something beyond the two of you, you bring in uh, a non-biased third party, if mm. possible. Um, you know, the Bible says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? And agreement, I think, goes beyond just like, I like you, you like me. It's philosophy about how we're raising our children. It's, mm. you know, what do we do with money? How do we manage it? And, you know, the marriage counselors will tell you that the two main topics for argument are finances and sex mm. um, you know I'm not getting enough of it you don't do it the way I like it etc yeah. or money we don't have enough you blow you know there's always one who's always blowing the money and one who's a little more uh, conservative so you know if there's something that is troubling us I mean I try to talk talk raise it um, and I think you know some of us need better tuition mm. around even how to have a conversation. I think mm. some of us have, have struggled around how to argue. And so instead of stating what it is your issue is, some of us struggle and so we act out and so we give a cold shoulder or, you know, we're not responsive in the bedroom and we're a little some way mm. and no one knows the reason why you are being some way and then it gets cold and then before you know, you haven't spoken to each other in a month. And so these are the, in my opinion, the open doors that we give the enemy into our marriage. Um, when we life mm. is happening and sometimes the affection that you can so easily give your children you know we have a little two-year-old walking around the house so every time he shows up everyone's attention I, you know? I, so last time i kind of gave a oh god this kind of attention, kind of attention. Like, in the room and i was like hey you well, know, you know, but let my little two-year-old walk around. <laughs> Everyone thinks he's cute, and so, hey, how are you? You change your voice oh, for him. Man. You, you know, and I, I, that's the thought that occurred to me the other day. That hey, my husband shows up. I'm like, hey, hey, what's up? Yeah, what's up? How's your day? You know. But it's it's moments like that. So mm. The fact that you've taken the work out of it, because sometimes you're like, eh, we should do something, but where is the time to plan? Where is the time so, Ajima, the fact that you have planned it, mm. the fact that all people have to do is show up is a gift. Mm. And these mm. environments, I mean, uh, the bedroom is much better when you're out of the house. You know, sometimes you just take it out of uh, out of the usual court. So, <laughs> and then it, it gets nicer. So, yeah, we and took then, our little one, he's... Uh, five years we went to Kumasi we decided we're not going to stay home yeah we will go to a hotel we found a good hotel and my son is like I'm not going home he's like he's not going home our daughter's done that to us before <laughs> she's like mommy why can't we just live here <laughs> so my wife is like what do we do when we get back home yeah. to make the home look like this place because he doesn't want to go home see you're gonna have challenges right <laughs> 
But I mean, it's so good psychologically. Mm. There's something about changing location. Mm. And as someone who works from home a lot, I realize that sometimes when my productivity is slumping, just go work elsewhere. Mm. Go work in a nice lobby of a nice hotel, drink tea from someone else's, you know, you know tea set, and then your mood changes all of a sudden. So imagine a few days out of your house, sleeping, you know, you leave your room, you come back, room service has come and cleaned the food mm. for you, you eat and you leave the place, you don't have to wash, you're the one eating the food and you didn't have to labor over it for hours, oh, it'll be a dream come true. Ah. You realize that you, you're not a mean person, you are just tired. You know. You realize that your marriage is, is actually okay, you just needed a break. That's so and the truth is, like, we don't really know the value of some time away. Mm. And we see that, you know, and we've become a little better with doing that as a couple and with our kids to say, hey, let's get out of the house. Like, all the shouting we were doing, it was actually a function of just being homebody. In the same space for the so same long. space, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I want to encourage those of you who are on the fence mm. about this retreat. Like, I would take Take it as like a seed being sown in your marriage mm. that let's go listen to new information let's go network with other couples let's break the norm of behavior for us and let's listen to new voices and see what god will inspire us with and i think as i close um ajiman i really want to encourage those of us who have careers mm. to be able to differentiate between the voice of god and the voice of ambition mm. I, that was really on my heart to share that mm. sometimes you know you're running you're going up and down busy and what of that like are you who sent you mm. did you send mm. yourself because you're mm. scrolling Facebook and you see ah, this idiot I went to school with is mm. doing this and this and you are doing what the book of Thessalonians says comparing themselves among themselves mm. they were not wise or is God the one sending you mm. so that's a new prayer I started praying for myself that Lord send me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you can't send yourself. Where do you want me to go? I pray over my schedule. Lord, everything that's on my schedule, anything on this schedule that, you, that, that you're not sending me to, cancel it or help me have the grace to cancel it. Mm. And, you know, I talk to a lot of women who feel overwhelmed, and this is part of the strategy. You know, I, I have three Ds. Delete, defer, or delegate. God has not called any of us to be super women. He's called us to be helpers he's called us to be we have multiple hats and you know we will answer we will give account for every role and so that means learning how to delegate learning how to work through other people learning how to incentivize other people to do part of the work that you've been assigned to so that you can focus on what truly matters mm -hmm. so differentiate between the voice of God and the voice of your personal ambition because I think that is something that's happening in this generation where we see like hey Charlie I'm slacking old because you see something on Facebook yeah. someone has posted yeah. like I posted that I was with President Sirleaf I mean this is grace this is the mm. I didn't go chasing it mm. I mean God is merciful when you submit your schedule to God when you say Lord order my steps help me to be in the right place at the right time help me to be in season help me not to be leading myself because you find that the exhaustion and the burnout is real and sometimes that's really at the crux mm. of the marriage breakdown you're so burnt out you don't know how to be a proper human being anymore because mm. you're tired you're frustrated and so you bring out your frustration on your spouse or your children so I pray for everyone listening that God will give you the grace and the sensitivity to know what is it that is your true work so that you don't mix your ambitions in with the leading of God and that God will teach us to be tactical because Moses was indeed called but it took Jethro to come and say my friend if you keep managing the call mm. this way you mm. will burn out mm. and so that's why you come to retreats like what you're organizing and listen to the tactics that sometimes the things I've come to know like it got hard for my kids to accept the amount of traveling I was doing so now I talk to my kids about my travels do I have your blessing mm. to go mm. because I'm called 
to them too. And I learned this from talking to another parent that I'm struggling because my daughter is fussing because I'm traveling. And I say, Anina, you know, and now she gives me her blessing. Aww. And she tells me how, you know, Aww. mommy go and we all have a deal. As soon as I arrive, you know, I open my hotel window. We have a video call. She can look out and I'm talking to her about what we're doing. And now Aww. we don't have those challenges anymore. Aww. I didn't read that in the Bible, Ajiman. I spoke to someone else. The Bible says we are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. So there are people who've walked through what you're walking through and you can go learn their strategies and add it to your tool book. So God, I think, gives us opportunities like this so that what took other people years, you will be able to figure out quickly so that you can focus on the real work, what God has assigned you to do. So God bless you all for putting this together. And if you haven't registered yet, I really want to encourage you, run, don't walk, run and register. And I look forward to seeing you all there. We look forward to seeing you all there. Give us a call this evening. Talk to Jennifer Osika on 0545-223324. That is 0545-223324. You've got up until 29th of August to book up your place. The earlier you book, the better your view, okay? <laughs> so you got to do it early. 0545-223324. Thank you so much for coming out. Thank you for having me. It's Bless always you. a pleasure. Ah, we're on. We're just about six minutes away from wrapping. I think we should wrap up. I'm sorry. Is our motivation going to go? Ready? That's right. Let's pick it and move on. Your microphone. 